most of their medical insight into this. But they're actually going to have the cast from Sesame Street in there as part of this town hall. And it occurs to me, you know, that's probably a great way, not only for the kids, but for the parents to kind of come to terms with how you explain COVID-19. And you're going to have to confront it because let's face it, the, the kids are like sponges, right? They're, at some level, they're ingesting all of this and they have to make, make sure that, you know, they're okay with it. But at the same time, you, you kind of have to make sure that you can't hide from them and they can't hide from it. So we thought we would uh, ask uh, Dr. Dina Kulik. She's a uh, pediatrician, founder of Kid Crew. And you can find her at drdina.ca. Uh, just to get a sense of, you know, how the kids are coping. And I think probably more to the point, uh, uh, doctor, is how the parents are coping. And because this is, this is a, it's tough enough for mom and dad to be going through this. But how do I manage coping with the kids and making sure that they're okay in this time when we go through this? For sure. Good morning. That, that song is so nostalgic for me. Like, I just started to like dance, you know. <laughs> You're singing along, are you? Good morning. Yeah, exactly. So <laughs> brings back such nice memories. Sesame Street is such a, you know, cultural icon for, you know, literally generations of, of kids. Um, yeah, I think I think many people, kids and adults, are having a very difficult time. You know, some of us are getting a bit used to it, if you will, a new normal. It's been, you know, six weeks in, in Ontario and in Canada doing this and longer in some other places. And many of us are found a bit of routine, but as it stretches on, it can become much more stressful, too, for many reasons, financially for people and emotionally and socially with this distancing, it starts to wear on people, especially if you're truly stuck in your house or in your apartment. So, yes, new normal, sort of, but it's a challenge for lots of people. One thing that Sesame Street does very well, it will take what is a otherwise really difficult, awkward hard conversation and they they don't shy away from it um so you know in this case you might get questions from kids who are experiencing might be domestic violence in the home as a result of what's going on around this there might be other issues that we're seeing uh, arise um so the magic in what they're able to do is to make sure that they don't hide it from the kids but at the same time they are addressing it appropriately for them. Yeah, Sesame Street has been great at this for a very long time. You know, they you know they brought in characters that have disabilities or are different races or religions or speak different languages. Um, you know, there was a, a new character a couple of years ago that was autistic, and they have you know a really great way of bringing forward real issues or differences amongst kids. And putting that in the forefront of the conversation to to bring that towards kids in a in a positive way, and I think they're really they're very talented at that. I think you know the this is very obvious for children, right? I mean, like you said at the outset, there's no way to hide this. You know, kids are home; they're not in daycare, they're not in school, and many parents are home, and that's a big change for them. So there's no need and no use and no benefit really of hiding the tremendous change that's happened in our society and like the whole world. You know, it's not just one or two communities or not just Ontario, not just Canada. It's everywhere. So I am a big proponent, to be honest with children, and have a conversation with them about, you know, what do they what do they know? What do they think? What are they feeling? And then addressing any concerns and questions they may have. Because every kid is going to have a different concern or question. And the experience for each one of us and for each one of our children is going to be different. And so the way we discuss that with each of our children should be a bit different as well. Yeah, we keep talking about sort of the, the, the echo effect of the pandemic, and much of it will be related to mental health. And I would think that that's going to be a particular um, concern, certainly in your practice, as far as you know, dealing with, with kids are concerned. Um, so how much of that are we ready for, do you think? Truly, unfortunately, I don't think we were ready for it before COVID. There's there's a severe limitation of mental health services for kids and adults in this country, and many, many, many people need, need have needs, have significant needs, and you know at least 
here, we don't have public health funding for all the mental health concerns that we have. So that we, we do have, you know, public funding, OHIP doesn't cover many services like social workers and psychologists by and large. Certainly some hospitals and some places have access, but those ac- that access point is quite limited. And so we already had a lot of challenges, you know, providing the best care for children with mental health um, lack, because of lack of resources, lack of uh, free coverage. And not everyone has health insurance. And even if you have health insurance, it likely doesn't cover, you know, thousands of dollars worth of care um, that, that someone might need every year. And then you're going to add to that the isolation and the financial burden and the social burden and all of the fear and anxiety and, you know, sometimes panic that goes along with this this pandemic. And there's not really an end in sight, right? I mean, I think we can see a light at the end of the tunnel. But if you're able to say, you know, by June 1st, period, we'll be back in school, we'll be back in work, there's something you can, you know, feel comfortable with there. But with the fact that we don't really know when this is going to be over, and we don't really know if there's going to be a second or third or, or multiple waves, that is very anxiety producing for people as well. And then if you add to that the fact that many parents also have anxieties and fears around this and they're living in these tight tight confines with their children. It, it's only going to exacerbate, you know, underlying mental health issues, or at least it has the potential to, unfortunately, and maybe even stir up some for people that didn't have them before. So, I mean, at Kid Crew, where I work, we are very cognizant of this and we're trying to offer as much mental health support as we can virtually. And I know a lot of other places are doing the same, but we're simply not going to be able to meet the needs I don't think. And also, I don't think a lot of people even have awareness of how much this is affecting their own mental health and, and sometimes physical health, right? This has been in the, the news this week that, you know, many of us pediatricians are quite concerned that parents are delaying care for their children and sometimes themselves for fear of going to clinics or going to hospitals. And a lot of us are seeing some children present in a farther along state with their illness or injury because parents were. Um, choosing to delay care for good reason, right? They want to stay out of hospitals. I, I understand mm-hmm. why they're doing so, but that is concerning. So, you know, if you're delaying care for your child that has, let's say, a broken arm, because you're just hoping that it's not broken and it's going to get better by itself, I can only imagine how many people are delaying access to care for mental health issues, which tend to get delayed in the first place. Uh, so you talk about that that online service that we, we would access that through your own website, drdina.ca? Yes, or kidcrew.com. So we have a whole team of um, both pediatricians and pediatric specialists, as well as allied health members like psychologists and social workers that are committed to seeing children, whether in person or virtually, for everything, any, you know, uh, health concern or mental health concern. There are many, many clinics that have closed down or are not providing care at the moment, and many people are without physicians, pediatricians, family doctors, specialists, etc. We have remained open and like I said, we have an army of people kind of working in the back end. So, you know, at any given time there's multiple pediatricians working virtually and some of us are going in house as well to do things like vaccines, which is another big concern of mine and many other physicians. I worry that with so many people not having access to care or choosing not to access care for fear of getting COVID that people are not getting the vaccines that they need. And then what happens when this is quote unquote over and people are then rushing to doctor's offices to get vaccines and how many people are going to be under vaccinated and what does that do in terms of posing a risk of, you know, having a measles resurgence or whooping cough or meningitis. Mm -hmm. That is very concerning to me. And I know the World Health Organization mentioned that this week as as well. And so at Kid Crew anyway, we're giving vaccines to anyone who needs actually, whether they're a Kid Crew patient or a patient elsewhere where they can't get access to their doctor. So, yeah, I mean, healthy kids we're seeing in the office, and I know other clinics are doing the same, but I do want to make sure that kids and adults are getting the access to care they need in a timely fashion, not delaying access to care, not delaying vaccines when appropriate, and, uh, and keeping everyone safe from the things that we know we can prevent. 
Indeed. Yeah, Listen, thanks. Thanks for doing this this morning and uh, for the work that you and your team are doing. I know uh, we keep saying it, it just almost sounds trite uh, that the uh, healthcare workers and our res- first responders and the folks who are, you know, grocery uh, delivery and, and, and everything else, how important all of this has been. And I know you realize that, but uh, and off, clearly we can't say thank you uh, enough. But uh, I will say thank you uh, for joining us this morning. It's good of you to be here. Thanks. Thank you. I appreciate that. Dr. Dina Kulik, a, p- a pediatrician founder of Kid Crew, and you can find her website, drdina.ca, also on the social media at Dr. Dina Kulik. 